Let's talk about let's talk about the end of her life. Um, what what was that like to find out? It was very sad. I was in New York. July eighteenth, uh, we finished working together. I went to New York. I was putting together. I was doing a big series with a, a big layout with a, a cover for a magazine called Cosmopolitan Magazine. Also, we had done this book together. Mm. I had put it all together. And um, on a Friday afternoon, I was in my office at the Sunday newspapers. I was a correspondent. And I get a phone call. And Marilyn Monroe is calling. This is Friday, uh, August uh, 4th. August 3rd, I guess, yeah. And uh, 1962. And she wants to know how things are going. I said, fine, everything looks great. The book, I've got it all together. And she says, I've got to see you. It's very important. I says, I'm trying to ev put everything together, Marilyn. George, she said, it's very important. There are many things we have to talk about. And there are some things that are very, very s shocking that you must know about. You must come out. She sounded very sad. I said, if you feel it's that urgent, then I'll come out. I'll, this is Friday. I'll try to get out there Monday. I'll fly out Monday. And so uh, that weekend, I went to the country. And uh, Sunday morning with my brother-in-law, we went to a little store to get some rolls and things. And I sat in the car listening to the radio music. And my brother-in-law went in to buy some things, and uh, he comes running out, and he says, Did you hear it on the radio? I said, What? I said, I didn't hear it. It was music. He says, I just heard on the radio in the shop, Marilyn Monroe is dead. And I turned white. I said, I can't believe it. I'm supposed to leave Monday to see her. I said, Is this a joke? It's not nice to, to make jokes like that. He says, I swear it's not a joke. So I got in the car and I left. And I went back to New York City to my apartment. It was about 100 miles away. I was living on Sutton Place then and I get there and the doorman says to me, uh, there's some press people been in asking about you. And he said, I told him you're not here. So I said, all right, good. So I went up to my apartment, the phone's ringing and everything. I put on the TV and uh, the radio and it's, everything is Marilyn Monroe is dead. Uh, and the phone rings, it's Associated Press, a big agency wanting a statement. And I says, look, I just got here. Give me a chance to get my breath. Uh, I promise I'll talk to you, but not right now. I'm, I'm, my mind is not here, you know? So I tried to get some sleep that night. I couldn't sleep. In the morning I went to my office. And um, what was the sense of shock? Describe, describe the shock. Who, who? I turned white. I couldn't believe it. That she's dead. Here. She's expecting me Monday morning. Uh, Monday, sometime Monday. I was going to leave Monday. Right. And I can't, well, it can't be. I mean, how could she be dead? They didn't know. They just found her dead. That's all. Because hmm. the details didn't come out then about the housekeeper and you right. know, all that. How, wh what, what did you lose? What did I lose? I lost a friend, a dear friend, when I lost her. And to this day, I still think about her. I loved her. I mean, she was a very sweet person, and she was very kind. And she said, we do this book together, and if anything should ever happen to me, I, I'm going to count on you, you know, to see that everything is done the way we agreed. And what did the world lose? The world lost a very sweet person that made them happy that brought joy for a few hours when they went into a dock theater to watch her films. And they lost a very kind person, and a person that loved everybody and had no hatred for anyone. She didn't hate her husbands. She loved them, but the frustration was that she couldn't get them to understand her.